It's the Battle of the Boats. That's right. <laughs> We have been busy, busy, busy on board Clarity the last few days. Can barely even move around inside Clarity right now. We got so many projects going on. Oh my God, the cushions are torn up. The laundry room was just about finished. Nice job, Nick. Got the solar that's underway, but it is a mess, mess, mess. So we're outside and we are weighing in on the very, very popular debate. <laughs> Catamaran versus monohull. Dum, dum, dum. We've had three monohulls and one catamaran, so we officially can give you the pros and cons of both. We're experts. <laughs> now, really, it's a little weird to see people doing this pros and cons of catamarans and versus monohulls. Some of them have never even, like they own a monohull, they've never owned a catamaran, but they're talking about the pros and cons. And it happens the other way, where they own a catamaran they've never had a monohull and they're making a comparison yeah we are uniquely qualified <laughs> three monoholes one catamaran and i want to give it away right off the bat there is no clear winner that's right it depends on what you want to do i think it also depends on your attitude but i think if we show you all the pros and cons you can see where you may need to adjust your attitude. And we get a lot of questions about this via email and in comments. So we thought, hey, let's just have it on the record. Let's do it. And be thorough. So here we oh go. Oh boy, are we gonna be <laughs> thorough. <laughs> kind of make it into a game show. The uh, first category between the cat versus mono is money. Well, Catamaran's got a couple dollar signs. <laughs> yeah, you get a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to monoholes. Got $100,000 to spend on a boat, you can get a very, very decently outfitted, decent sized monohull, and you are barely scratching the surface with a catamaran. That's 100 right. grand does not buy you a whole lot. That's right. Yeah. Value. Yes. If it's a question, we, we think if it's a question between going now with a monohull versus going a whole lot later with a catamaran, I would say maybe go now because yeah because if you wait you may never go yeah that happens to I a hate lot to of say people that, but that's the reality you're faced with birthing catamaran loses <laughs> that is correct if you're planning on only cruising part of the year let's say three to six months it might make a lot of sense to just stick with the monohull because the birthing costs for a catamaran are so much more. The best you can do is about 1.5 times the cost of a monohull. In some cases, especially on the islands, you are paying double the monohull rates and that really, really adds up. For year round, if you're out cruising all the time, you're not gonna spend a lot of time in marinas, but when you're in marinas, it's gonna cost you a lot more on a cat. Nothing yep. new there. Yeah maintenance yes there's another very very clear winner when it <laughs> comes to maintenance not just the cost but the extent of maintenance uh, monoholds of course have just one engine one rudder uh, the rigging can oftentimes be simpler and doesn't have to be changed out quite as often uh, the standing rigging on a catamaran really needs to be changed out about every eight to ten years monoholds you can probably get by with a lot longer than that Hauling out. Hauling out, wow. Who knew this would be so difficult? Not only is it a lot more expensive to haul out a catamaran, but when you've got a boat that's 25 feet wide, you've gotta be in a larger yachting facility, a larger boat yard where they get a larger travel lift or a larger crane. And there are fewer of those out there and they know it. <laughs> so they charge a bit more. Trucking. Now, this uh, is something I've never really heard talked about in the cat versus monohull debate, but with our last boat, we were able to truck it up and down the West Coast, saving a lot of wear and tear and exposure to the gnarly Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And we had friends last year, it was the year before, they trucked their 47-foot monohull coast to coast. That's amazing. You skip the canal, you skip all that wear and tear, and uh, you can just truck your boat across the land. Not so with most catamarans. Anything uh, beamier than about 14 feet, it's a no-go. Wow. Now, catamarans did end up with one green on this subject That's of right. money, and <laughs> that is selling. That's right. Uh, when you go to sell your monohull, even if it's a very, very nice monohull, you are up against every other monohull that's been manufactured since about 1975, it seems, and there are fewer cats on the market. 
So, when it comes time to sell, it seems everybody wants a cat, and if you're priced right, it's gonna go quick. All right. That's so. category number one, the money category. And it seems to me- <laughs> The catamaran's lost. <laughs> the monohole is the clear winner when it comes to money. Yes. Number two is? Category number two is? Sailing. Sailing. And the first subject is tradition. Yes, we didn't really know what word to use here. But uh, when it comes to that romantic notion of gliding across the water under billowing sails, I don't know. The traditional monohull for us seems to win out just a bit. That's right. You are sailing the way our ancestors sailed. That's true. The original first boats. And there's something pretty magical about that. Yeah, when you're bouncing around in your little monohull, it's the same as when Joshua Slocum headed out for his round-the-world trip. So we give it to the monohull. Yes. Sailing well. Sailing well. It is easier to learn how to sail well on a monohull. And that's basically because you can feel the wind and you can feel the responsiveness of the boat much better on a monohull than you can on a catamaran. You just don't get the feedback. So yeah. sailing well is easier on a monohull. And I would say the smaller the boat you can learn on, the better. I don't know, it's kind of a toss up. I think I wanna switch these. In general, if you're starting from scratch with no experience sailing boats, I think that it's easier <gasps> to learn right. how to sail on a catamaran. Okay, there Still you go. harder to learn how to sail well, but easier to learn in general. That's true, yeah. more upright. Sail management. Oh yes. So imagine yourself on a dark night without a moon and the wind is piping up and it's time to reef the mainsail. <laughs> well, on a catamaran, you aren't journeying on deck heeled over like this. Uh, it's mainly flat. It might be moving around. It's probably moving around quite a bit, but it's not heeling over. Sail management is so much easier on a cat. Yeah. All right. Upwind. Oh yes, the old upwind <laughs> debate. Your catamaran doesn't sail upwind very well. Well, my monohull certainly goes to weather better than your cat. Okay, okay, okay. We are gonna give it to the monohull with better overall upwind sailing ability. But there's a huge asterisk here. There's a huge caveat. And that caveat is that when you're cruising, you almost never sail to weather. You are always looking for weather conditions in which you are on a broad reach, a beam reach, or sailing downwind. Gentlemen, as they say, don't sail to weather. All right, the next category is storms. That's dun, dun, dun. right. We've been in real storm conditions about 15 years ago on our first cruise, about four days out of San Diego. Uh, huge breaking seas, 60, 65 knot winds. It was a 35,000 pound monohull, and it was a handful. It was quite a story. You can see it on another video on our channel. We have not been on this catamaran in full storm conditions. So just based on our experience, we would say that while we could probably handle those conditions on this boat, we would rather be on a monohull in storm conditions. The trick, of course, avoid the storm That's conditions right. altogether. And with the technology nowadays, you can pretty much do that, right? Yeah. And a weatherman on board. <laughs> that helps. Okay, the next one is comfort at sea. Comfort at sea, and this should come to no surprise to most folks that the catamaran is really the clear, clear winner here. Okay. The fact that you're not healing, the fact that you've got all this open space, when you're at sea in most conditions, overall, it's much, much more comfortable on the catamaran. The next subject is confused seas. Yes, this is where we're looking at waves and swells coming from two different directions. And after being at sea in this boat in confused seas and in monohulls, we have got to give it to the monohull. <laughs> the monohull handles confused seas, especially with lighter winds, better. Because you've got two holes with the catamaran, 
the waves are reacting with one hole at a different time than they are the other hole, and you get kind of this jerky yeah. motion. You're kind of, and you're up at the helm, and it does feel a bit like a washing machine. Yeah. So while cats are in general more comfortable at sea than monoholes, in really confused seas, we give it to the monohull. Ah, motion, the age-old debate with catamarans. We don't like catamarans. We don't like the motion on them. All right, the motion is different on a cat. It's quicker, it's faster. Overall though, motion goes to the catamarans. It is much better. It's much, much more tolerable than the motion of a monohull, which is maybe slower, but much more dramatic. And that really wears you down yeah. over time. And the next one is? Ooh, maneuvering. We're gonna give it to the catamaran. In a big, big way. Uh, we're talking about maneuvering in confined spaces. And for the most part, maneuvering on a catamaran is a lot like pushing a shopping cart. Mm -hmm. You're pushing one side, then you're pushing the other. If you wanna spin it, you just put one engine into reverse, spin it the other way. You can spin this boat pretty much in its own length, which is amazing. It is amazing. And I gotta tell you, with the monoholes we've had, the most stressful part of the entire thing was always the docking. Yeah. Because of course you wanna come in slow, but the slower you come in, the less rudder effectiveness you have. They back up sideways. <laughs> Maneuvering a cat is so much easier. Big one for the cat. That's right. Okay. Anchorage access goes to the catamaran. Yeah, it's, uh, it's much easier to find a comfortable spot in most anchorages on a catamaran, but it's not just because of the shallower draft. I mean, that's one reason. When conditions are rougher further out, you can get closer to the beach where it's shallower. But something people don't talk about a lot are bugs. <laughs> and there are, some, there are times, there are conditions where it's much more comfortable to be out further away from the beach then close in because the bugs are biting closer in. Mm -hmm. In a catamaran, you can get further out and not be quite as affected by a swell. In the monohull, you really get to tuck in close. Uh, this one is a little bit counterintuitive. Shallow water. That's right. Okay. Goes to the monohull. Goes to the monohull. We are talking about navigating in shallow waters. And you might think, okay, the shoal draft is gonna make it easier to navigate in shallower waters. However, with the catamaran, you have two holes. So if you do go aground, you have one chance to get off, and that's to back away. With a monohull, you hit ground, and if you've got a lifting keel, you can lift it up. Or if you don't, you can also heel the boat over. You can kedge off with an anchor, tip the boat sideways, and get yourself off that way. So in that way, shallow water navigation, we actually give it to the monoholes. And the third category is livability. That's right. What it's like to live on these things day to day. And <laughs> I see a lot of green in the camera. <laughs> I don't think there are going to be a lot of surprises for you here. Yeah. Most of these go to the uh, camera. And let's break it down. Okay. Number one, comfort at anchor. Yes. Do we need to even say anything else? You're not rolling around. Yeah. You're anchored. You're flat. It's basically like a houseboat at that point. Very comfortable living at anchor on a catamaran and you spend probably 90 to 95 percent of your time at anchor now remember our flopper stoppers with, <laughs> with low pressure yeah to get rid of the roll in the pacific on our first big monohull we had flopper stoppers they are like these wings that you put out <laughs> from the boom and from a spinnaker pole and they dampen the roll and it was an art we could get the boat fairly flat but then the wind would shift you just a little bit yeah. and you're rolling again. But, it's just uh, a great name, Flopper Stoppers. Flopper Stopper. For the monoholes out That's there. That's right. Water access, it's really nice on the catamaran with the sugar scoops. That's right. Um, some of the newer monoholes have these yeah. low, easy access transoms that you can swim right up to and it's only maybe this far off the water. but. By and large, monoholes, you're climbing up a ladder to get out of the water, whereas with the sugar scoops, it's basically like a little staircase. That's very, very nice. Yeah. The davits. Okay, how often do we see our monohole sailing friends towing their dinghies? Oh my God, everywhere. It's 
actually a little dangerous to do that. Not only are you slowing your boat down, but they, the dinghies do flip sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, if you get into some big following seas, it can ram the back of your boat. And it's also an opportunity for somebody to take your dinghy pretty easily. So. With davits like we've got, it's pretty easy to raise the boat, mm -hmm. the dinghy up, uh, whenever we're not using it. In fact, we barely ever, well, we never tow the dinghy, but we barely even leave it in the water. No, we don't. We hoist it out because it's just so easy. And the sound of it, you know, hitting the hull or just in the water. So yeah. davits, davits are, are such great. a great thing on the catamarans. Shade. Yes, shade goes means... to the catamaran. Yeah, you've basically got like a back porch out here, or we call it the front porch, uh, and it's very well shaded. A lot of the modern cats are exactly this way. Monoholes, you've got a cockpit. Frequently, you'll put some shade over it, but you just don't have the shaded space. This is our sunscreen. People yeah. ask, oh, you must go through so much sunscreen. No, we just stay in the shade. That's right. You stay cooler that way, too. Pet friendly goes to the catamaran, which yeah. is the reason why we ended up in a catamaran. Sugar really helped us make that decision because that was a deal killer for her on the monohull. Yeah, as she was getting older and older, she was comfortable at first on the monohull and then she just would kind of crouch in the corner. We've got friends that have large dogs on monohulls. It's doable, mm -hmm. but it's so much easier. Yeah, and that. this is just our opinion. Right. And the next one is guests. Yeah, this is another one of the main reasons why we went with a catamaran. We had had guests on our monohulls and even on the 46 footer, which was fairly large, it was very difficult to get private space just to get to an area where it's quiet. One couple can chat while the other one isn't disturbed. Obviously with the two holes and in this case uh, four bedrooms, everybody gets a private yeah, corner. It's great. And noise. Yes, well on a monohull you're more or less living in the water. That can actually be kind of cool. I remember when we first got down to Southern California and we uh, were docked up and it was quiet and we heard all this little crickling and crackling and all these <laughs> sounds and we were like, what's going on? What is that? We'd never heard it before. Of course, that's all the sea life that you yeah. hear in the water around you. I remember once in Alaska, we were on a charter boat up there in a sailboat monohull and we looked out our little window and there was like a sea lion sleeping <laughs> next right to next boat. to the boat and it was just the coolest thing in a monohull you're living down in the water that's noisier in a catamaran you're living above the water for the most part yeah so depending on if you like that kind of noise that can be a positive on a monohull for us we like the cats they're quieter and last one that goes to the catamaran is exercising it's something that we should do more of <laughs> But it's very difficult to get exercise on a monohull. Yeah. We had good friends down in Mexico where they had like a stair stepper, stair climber on their monohull. And Richard would be down there every other day working up a sweat, <laughs> but it's difficult with limited space. Yeah, so we have great space to work out on the, the bow. We've got the TRX band, so we'll go out there and get a little bit of muscle toning and working out, beefing up. But uh, yeah, just having more space, it's good to get the exercise. So another, another category that the catamaran takes is livability. Clear winner in the livability category. Okay. This is the final category. And it's called the nuts and bolts. So this is kind of a general category, right? Yeah, it's kind of general. First one is aesthetics. Well, <laughs> the winner we think is the monohull. We don't want to step on any toes here. We like the look of our Leopard 46. I, I think it's a beautiful got, boat. Yeah. I don't want to single anybody out, but I do think that there is a lot of less pleasing catamarans aesthetically. They're, I don't want to say ugly, but there's a lot of catamarans out there that are really, really tall and bulbous and boxy looking. And I think in general, I like the monohull look, that low, sleek, nautical look. So I kind of have to edge this one in for monohulls in terms of aesthetics. Okay. The next category is ventilation. Ventilation. And that does go to the catamaran. Yeah, we've got uh, how many opening ports on this boat? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you count the bathrooms, you've got uh, 12 opening ports on this boat. On our monohulls, it's always been just the companion way and like two overhead hatches, and that's just about it. The ventilation on a catamaran is just so much better. Yeah. 
Ah, the next one is solar. Solar capacity goes to the catamaran. It is all about real estate in the solar game. And of course, when you've got a boat that's 25 feet wide and a big coach roof and overhangs, you can put a lot of solar on. We should have close to 1,800 watts of solar by the time we're done with this next conversion. On a monohull, it is difficult to squeeze in more than maybe seven or 800 watts. And that's gonna cover all of your bimini and We had it on the Dodger. side panels. You're gonna be sticking it everywhere to get all that wattage. <laughs> yeah. All right, the next one is engine access. That goes to the catamarans. Yeah, we've got separate engine um, hatches the engines are outboard of the living spaces and that cuts down on fumes but also it's much easier to reach around to different parts of the engines uh, on our other boats i'll tell you the boat yoga was even worse in the monohulls trying to get behind the engine or to the side that didn't have the access yeah. panel it's much better on a cat yeah. in general well here's one that the monohulls take is cleaning that's right <laughs> All that real estate that gives you the solar and the workout space, I'll tell you, it's a lot more fiberglass to clean. Uh, a 46 foot monohull, this boat is a Leopard 46, a 46 foot monohull, a ah, couple hours to get it all done right. To clean this boat, it's a day long process to do it well. Polishing, waxing, that's all going to be much more expensive on a boat this size, just because you've got so much more surface area. Yeah. So cleaning, we give it to the monohull. Yep. Hole cleaning goes to the catamarans. Uh, you've got more hole to clean on a catamaran. You've got two holes, but it's actually easier to clean because the shallower draft means you're not diving down quite as far. If you've got scuba equipment, this doesn't matter at all. But in general, I would say that cleaning the holes on a cat is easier than cleaning the deeper hole on a monohull. And the final topic is organization, which I think goes to the catamaran. Yeah, I think it's it's a pretty easy call here. It is so difficult to stay organized on boats in general. Mm -hmm. You've got all these spare parts, you've got provisions, you've got your clothes, you've got camera equipment, you've got dog stuff and it's really really hard to organize your stuff on any boat mm -hmm. on a monohull where all the storage is crammed back and below and on the sides you have quite quite a few less opening ports so staying organized mm -hmm. on a monohull is much harder on a catamaran all that storage can actually be a bit of a problem because you've got the space for it, you can fit it on board, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to overload yeah. a cat. Yeah, we still need to go through and toss out a lot of stuff on Clarity. <laughs> so obviously we've given you a lot to consider. I don't wanna make it sound like a catamaran is just hands down better than a monohull. Yeah. It just depends on what you're gonna do with it. I think that if you were gonna sail only a couple months a year and have a boat in storage, really an argument could be made for going with a monohull. Maybe you're going to live on land most of the time. You don't need all that space. You don't need to have all those live aboard accoutrements mm -hmm. and you're not going to pay all the extra berthing, all the extra haul out fees and mm -hmm. the upfront costs for the boat. However, if you're going full time mm -hmm. and you can afford it, I do think that overall the catamaran is just a very, very clear winner. After the miles we've done on monohulls and the miles we've done on this cat, mm -hmm. I wouldn't trade living aboard a catamaran for a monohull for just about anything. Yeah, so I think that's a good point. When you're talking full-time living, I would say for sure a catamaran. Would we ever have a, a monohull for part-time living? Yes. Absolutely. In fact, I suspect that when we're done living full-time on this cat and we move back to land part-time, full-time, we are absolutely gonna have other monohulls. In fact, for day sailing, I would prefer a monohull. I like healing over just a bit. I just don't wanna live on a boat that's healing over 24 seven while you're underway. Yeah. yeah. So I think it just depends on what you plan to do with it, how badly you wanna get out there. If you cannot wait and you're talking three, five years down the road, I say you might wanna just get yourself a monohull, even if it's an inexpensive one that you can do on the weekends or on your vacations. I think that our YouTube channel, maybe other YouTube channels, 
might make it seem like you just have to have a catamaran in order to go cruising, and I just don't think that that's the case. Yeah, we don't agree with that. Yeah. So. If it's a choice between going now with a monohull you can afford or waiting 10 years or even five years to do it on a catamaran, I say buy the affordable monohull now, go get a taste of the life. You can always change it up and go to a cat later if you really, really like it. Thank you so much for tuning in while we are living at the dock here in Wilmington. Yeah, we will have some other boat project related videos coming up for you in the next couple of weeks. We really, really appreciate your likes and your subscriptions and all your comments. It's really been fantastic to have this interaction. In fact, videos like this, well, they come to mind because of the questions that you're asking. We read all your comments, all your emails, and that really mm -hmm. sets us up for doing videos that uh, spread the love, spread the knowledge just a bit. Yeah, and it's fun for us to go through these again and organize it in our minds as well and, and cover these topics. So it's, it's fun. Thank you. And it makes us appreciate this cat just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. See you next time. All right. Bye. bye.